Now this truce, this treaty, was to bring an end to the war and bring harmony between the Jimyoin and the Daikakuji lines, the north and the southern lines of the imperial family, because they are both technically imperial family members, so, you know, this is trying to patch things up, fix things. At this time, Emperor Godaigo had already died. So you, you understand, Emperor Godaigo is, has died, Ashikaga Takuiji has died. These are now, you know, we're in multiple, multi-generations later, right? There's been multiple generations. Or not multiple, not like many, but like there's been two generations. So Godaigo's already dead. Like I said, each side has already gone through for a few emperors, etc. So during this truce, the, this truce is actually between Emperor Go Kamiyama and Emperor Go Komatsu. So on the south, it's Emperor Go Kamiyama, and on the north, Emperor Go Komatsu. These are the two who come to treaty. Emperor Go Kamiyama will rule until 1392, then Go Komatsu will take over. And Go, Ko and Go Komatsu would retire or die, right? He is either going to, you know, abdicate, retire early, or die. And then the rule will return to the next Daikakuji emperor, the next southern emperor. And this agreement would alternate over the generations. So this is actually how the rule between the two lines used to be. Origin but initially, the two lines would alternate. You, they would alternate between um, the, the, the Jimyoin and the Daikakuji. It was the Hojo who pretty much screwed this up. And so this, this is why uh, Go Kamiyama and Go Komatsu are agreeing to this, because this is how it actually used to be. And so this agreement and treaty is made by imperial decree. So the highest order of a Shinto promise, uh, Go, this is Go Kamiyama is understood, to, the Southern Emperor is understood to be the legitimate emperor. Nobody questions that. And this treaty is made between Go Kamiyama and Go Komatsu. So this is a promise. This is a treaty. It's a vow made with the emperor. This is like the highest vow you could possibly take. So in 1393, the authority was handed off from the Daikakuji southern line to the Jimyoin, the northern line. And at this time, everything was fine. There's no fighting. Well, but no fighting between the north and the south. I need to point out though that uh, at this time there was lots of infighting among the Ashikaga's own retainers. Many of the families who had been loyal during the 1300s were being downsized by the Ashikaga. The Ashikaga didn't want to get anybody getting too powerful. So basically, the main families that served the Ashikaga the best during the Namboku Jidai were getting screwed in the in the early 1400s they were being accused of things they were having power taken from them they were being you know retired early all kinds of things and they didn't like that and so many of them began to rebel and the moment they rebelled then the ashikaga said oh look you're rebelling you're treasonous and then they would wipe them out so it was pretty dirty again remember ashikaga takuiji is long dead at this point and he actually died in 1358 these are the these are the heirs of Takuiji. These are the Ashikaga of the early 1400s that are doing this to their own people. But anyway, back to the story. Everything is running smoothly until the Jimyoin line refuses to hand the power back to the Dai Kakuji line when it's time, which as which you can which as you know is a direct violation of the promise made to the emperor, a direct violation of the treaty, but it gets worse. In 1412, the northern emperor Gokumatsu decides he will hand power off to his own son, clear and direct violation of the treaty and sacred promise made with Emperor Go Kamiyama, the southern emperor. Not only is this considered a political attack, but it's a spiritual attack, because it was a promise made to Emperor Go Kamiyama. The act is considered kind of an evil and sinful action because again this was a this was a promise made to the emperor and so it has religious and political implications this caught this event this the 1412 refusal this actually caused emperor go kamiyama to come out of his buddhist retreat see the emperor the southern emperor go kamiyama had retired after 1393 and he was practicing buddhism so he was off in his own little place, doing his daily Dharma practice, being a proper Buddhist in retreat. 
but this forced him to come out of retirement. Now, he, then he returns to Yoshino, and the southern forces reassemble. However, Gokumatsu and Gokamayama never end up fighting. They never come to blows over this. It seems Gokomatsu was going to back down from his treason and honor his promise. It seemed like the peace treaty was going to be honored. Now, Gokomatsu had already made his son the emperor, right? He had already set that in. So what had happened was, is it appears from the records and from deductive reasoning that Gokamayama and Gokomatsu had agreed that Gokomatsu's son since he'd already been set up as emperor, would be emperor, but then the transition would happen after him. So it was like, okay, Gokomatsu, you are you you kind of lied and was sneaky, but your son will pass it on, and then it'll be over. So that was so the treaty got modified slightly. Gokamayama was willing to let Komatsu's son be emperor as long as Komatsu's son, named Shoko, would pass it on to a, a southern emperor. However, as to be expected, Gokomatsu broke the treaty again. Because, as I said, they had come to an understanding that Emperor Shoko, the northern emperor Shoku, would, would, would go ahead and remain emperor, but that when he, he would pass it to the Daikakuji line, the southern line. And Gokomatsu promised this. Now, Shoko dies in 1428 without an heir. The northern line is gone. There is no more Jimyoin emperors. They are gone. Therefore, not only should the throne revert back to the southern line because of the treaty, but standard operating procedure dictates that if the Jimyoin line comes to an end, it automatically defaults back to the Daikakuji line. That is the sacred standard operating procedure, standard and sacred operating procedure of the imperial succession. However, what happens next is what causes the southern court to reassemble as a military force that, would re that remains a religious, political, and military faction from the 1400s until the present day. Despite the fact that he had made a sacred treaty with the emperor, Komatsu, uh, uh, so that, that Go Komatsu had made a sacred treaty with Go Kameyama, despite the fact that the Jimyoin line was done, it was over, and that standard operating procedure means that the Daikakuji line gets the throne, despite these realities. Go Komatsu refuses to let the Daikakuji line have the throne, and he goes to a remote branch of the imperial family, a family that's not actually qualified to ascend the throne, and he names that he names one of the members of that family as the next emperor. Now, so Emperor Go Hanazono is made emperor, but he never should have been, by treaty and by lineage and by standard operating procedure. The northern line died with Shoko. Go Hanazono being given the throne over the Daikakuji line is not only a severe break from the rules and the it's a direct break from the standard operating procedure, but it's also a breakage of the treaty. It is an, a very deep, ultimate insult to the true authentic imperial line. By Go, by Go Komatsu making somebody who's not qualified to be emperor, emperor, it spits right in the face of the Daikakuji line. And at this point, the southern forces, the Southern Loyalists know that this is not, this is, this is bad news. There's no, there will be no negotiating with Gokomatsu after all. But was there also another factor behind there? And the answer to that is yes. It turns out that it's not just Gokomatsu's stubbornness or hate, whatever, you know, uh, just power hungry, etc., etc., and a major force behind Komatsu at this point is the Ashikaga. See, it turns out that the Ashikaga shoguns decided that they did not, they also did not want the southern emperors to be back in the throne because the Ashikaga have all, were, had always used the Jimyoin line as puppets. And if, the, and if the throne goes back to the Daikakuji line, 
then they're not in charge anymore because the Daikakuji would certainly strike them uh, out of politics, take, remove their status as shoguns. So the Ashikaga uh, essentially threaten the northern emperor into picking an illegitimate choice for the emperor. So this isn't just the northern line sort of disrespecting and breaking the treaty, but this is the Ashikaga Shogun. So once again, this is a, the, 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 just like the Hojo, this is the Ashikaga Shoguns manipulating imperial politics. And this is essentially seen as not only politically, as a political and military affront, but it's also considered from a Shinto perspective, very sinful, very dirty thing to do. So after all of these events take place, the Northern Emperor and the Ashikaga Shogunate begin to suffer several uprisings and random military attacks from just, just random bad weather, peasant uprisings, all kinds of just negative things begin to happen. All right, these things weren't happening before, but then after this sort of uh, selecting an unqualified person illegitimately to take the throne. Suddenly, the country starts, there's famines here, there's farmers uprising here, unexplained fires, weather, bad weather, all of these things. And the Southern Court teachings say this is because heaven was greatly displeased with the northern, with the, with the treason of the Ashikaga Shogunate. So because the northern, the Jimyo, uh, the, the, well, it was no longer the Jimyoin because they were dead. So this sort of illegitimate imperial line that was now on the throne with the Ashikaga traitors being in charge of the country was literally causing, because that was such a sinful thing, it was starting to cause all of this sort of negative energy to start manifesting in Japan and that like you know there was famines and then there was uprisings and that this would ultimately lead to just chaos in the country which I mean which we see actually from this point on we see the outbreak of the Onin War in the Sengoku period etc 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 so you know um, anyway the or the also we need to point out the northern emperors never used the imperial regalia nor performed the ceremonies to actually become emperor during these so when emperor shoku at the post shoku events when they decided to get this illegitimate unqualified uh, branch of the family that's not qualified to actually be emperors when they put them on the throne and this stuff happened they actually didn't even do the ceremonies so in 1443, the southern court sends samurai to steal back the imperial regalia. And with the regalia, the southern emperors perform the rituals to properly empower the southern emperor and his sons, all of the princes, so that any of these members of the, the Daikakuji line can legitimately take the throne, unlike Emperor Go Hanazono and the northern pretenders. Now, the northern court eventually reclaims two of these three items. But one of these items is contested to this day. Now, most historians and northern supporters will say that all three items were regained by the northern court. However, the southern court and its loyalists say that they still have one of the items, and the north only has two. The third item is not really in their possession. Now, Aside from everything the Northern Court and the Ashikaga Shoguns have done thus far, they also commit something else that is considered an egregious sin. Southern Court, now, Southern Court loyalists do succeed in forming a conspiracy to assassinate the Ashikaga Shogun. It's a very complicated, uh, it's very complicated, and we're not going to go into it in this video, but in, but in, in summation, they use disgruntled Ashikaga retainers to pull this off. So for you guys who like the Shinobi and Espionage and Ninja, this is a golden moment. They actually do a giant espionage plot to make disgruntled Ashikaga generals. They actually convince them to turn and they actually put them against each other and they eventually it eventually leads to the assassination of the Ashikaga Shogun. But so that is and that's a military attack. That's samurai versus samurai. That's fair. What happens next is considered the sin. Rather than a standard military response that would have left samurai dead, meaning samurai killing samurai, the Ashikaga engage in a kill em all to the last man hunt, a war of attrition against the southern loyalist. But not just the samurai. 
they actually spread this war of attrition to the southern emperors themselves. The Ashikaga actually dragged the southern emperor outside and cut his head off in front of everybody. Now you have to understand, these are samurai, these are bushi, their job is to serve, to die for the emperor, and they drag the southern emperor, the current head of the Daikakuji line, out of the building he's in, drag him out and chop his head off in front of everybody. For the shogun to execute the head of the Daikakuji line is an absurd reality, and it's probably the gravest sin that a samurai could actually commit, and it completely throws all of Shinto out the window.